Um, J.C. Treader, supposedly uh, the Vikings are on his short list of teams that he'd be interested to play for. Your thoughts? I don't know. I've been hearing the same shit for fucking three weeks, four weeks. His dad's want to sign him. Either go fucking sign him because I don't think that he's command. Well, he's still available right now. Like, what are we thinking? Five and a half, maybe six million. They talked somewhere about that, that a little range. bit on Score North today. He was making like he got cut from uh, Cleveland and he was set to make like eight or nine million. Um, so it shouldn't be that much. The best centers in the league get paid ten or a little bit above. Um, I would think that, and the Vikings have like eight million in cap space. So and. I, I talked about him today and included him in my uh, in my caption for the for Minnesota Sports Fan Daily, and his dad liked it. So his dad is going around and searching. His dad's been all over it on searching Twitter. Searching on Twitter he's, for Treader yeah, he, and going and he's, finding these posts. He's even been he's been saying like the the balls in the Vikings court. So Bradbury's in the last year of his deal. We're obviously you're never gonna you know you work an exercise his fifth year option, but. Is there a reason you wouldn't sign Treader? I mean, do they really have that much faith in Bradbury? Again, Treader was pretty banged up. He couldn't practice all year, so there's injury concerns there. So even with Bradbury, you might need both of those guys at different points. And we've seen injuries across our offensive line like crazy that can absolutely derail a season. So if you have the cap space, I know that you want to have a little bit of a slush fun in case something happens during the course of the year. But that's a guy that grades out of the top five at his position in the entire league, like at a position that we need desperately more than probably anything else. So what's the hesitation? I don't know. Outside of corner, I don't think there's a bigger a bigger void that you could fill than that center spot after the draft. Um, no. Because you could have said interior offense or interior defensive line, um, obviously corner safety, but now that the draft is done, we've covered safety Our the interior of our defensive line might not look great, but it's got at least enough depth to feel somewhat comfortable yep. with it. Um, you'd like to get another defensive end because of all the injury issues with Hunter and Zadarius Smith. But when you're just looking at, I'm a little starters, curious to how they do it. Like the defense thing, cause you got a lot of the depth guys that we've drafted over the last couple of years, you know, the Wanums, the, mm -hmm. um, can't remember the names right now. Pittsburgh guy. Time, uh, anyway. And then you've also got, uh, was it Harrison that they just signed this year? Uh, Harrison At Phillips. Yep. yep. Um, and then also uh, Tomlinson. So mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to start, you know, doing some different mixing and matching. And I think they're going to play a very hybrid type of a defense. And I feel like you'll see some of those guys line up on the outside and then they'll get creative with Zadarius and, um, Daniil on the outside edge rushing. So I feel like we're, we're probably fine from a defensive line perspective because I think they can get creative with a lot of those guys. Yeah, like I so oh, Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so I mean, it kept to, you know, kind of add more weight to your point. Like the only thing you really probably need right now is a capable center and, if you know, a cornerback if you could. But again, cornerbacks can be far too costly to replace what we have there, but you could use depth. There's no spot with a specific person who's available that you could yes. fix a need this easily at that price point at, i mean you look at you look at our offense you look at our offensive line if you put treader in the middle you, i mean i don't want to get like over the top but would the Vikings have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL at that point you've got darisa pretty close you've got the cleveland you got darisa who looked good you've got O'Neal, who's one of the top right tackles in the entire league. Cleveland is good, very capable. Mm -hmm. And then you'd put Treader, who's a top five center in the league. And then you've got all of those guys that you just signed that all can battle it out for the right guard position. And one of those guys out of the 74 people that are battling, one of them has to be at least capable, if not above capable, but far better than what we've seen there in the last five years. Yeah, if nothing else... You would think you could find somebody at that right guard spot who at least works really well with the rest of the talent that you have. Maybe yeah. they're the least talented there, but they communicate really well, and there's enough talent around them where you they don't look like a hole. And then maybe – I mean, we still have – who knows what Wyatt Davis is going to be. Who, That's Ed just Ingram. It, we so. don't know what Ed Ingram is going to be. Like, So those guys could end up being legitimate guards still in the, in the NFL, and then you – 
you'd have a really fucking good offensive line. So to me, it's just it's a no brainer. There's nobody else that you could find at that price point. Well, Quincy should be familiar with them. I mean, I've, obviously, I don't know what interaction people at that level have with the players, but right. there's connections That's there in point. Cleveland. I, I didn't. I didn't even think of the connections either. Exactly. That's what makes it even you know more a little bit. You know, just strange. Like maybe if they don't do it, maybe it's maybe it's Quasey saying he knows more about Treader's. Well, that's what I wonder what about, like know. the in. Yeah, because I mean, Treader, from my understanding, I don't think he even was able to practice pretty much all year last year. But he logged all healthy snaps, so it's, he couldn't couldn't get through the practice session. But he's able to, you know, bring himself up for the game. So maybe, yeah, and I mean, so maybe that, there's that more lingering me, issues like, in the rest of the league. That to me shows how good he is. Like, oh, doesn't even need to practice, to... and he still just walks on the playing field, and he's a top five center in the league. Like, that is yep. a guy where it's... if you can get him on the field, you don't have to worry about him. Exactly. Yeah, that's – I just – I don't know why. It really doesn't make sense not to do it unless there's something that Quasey knows that we don't. Um, oh, but also, why hasn't he signed with anything else in the league, too? I mean, there's, you know, it's not just us. The so. one thing that uh, Score North brought up that I thought was interesting was once free agency went on for a while, wouldn't it be better if you're the free, if you're a free agent who knows your worth and knows that you're talented and that you're not worried about whether or not you're going to get a job at the end of the day? Wouldn't it make yep. more sense to wait till the draft is over so that you can make sure that like you don't go and sign with the Vikings, let's say, and then all of a sudden they splurge because uh, uh, Tyler Lindenbaum makes it all the way to pick 34, and they yeah. go, we just can't say no to this type of value at this pick, and so they draft him even though they already picked you up as a free agent. Something like that could happen. So instead, you just wait, and now you get to pick your destination knowing, like, I'm walking in and I'm playing. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, there's probably some truth to that. Probably some truth to the fact that if you don't sign, if you know you're going to sign, you know you're that talented and that you're going to get a job, you can skip a lot of the offseason bullshit and stuff like that, too. So 